Welcome back to another episode of 5 a.m. Theology. Rose, today we're going to talk about counting the cost from 1 Kings 3, 16 to 28. And the title of this part is called Solomon's Wisdom, and I'll read it here. Then two prostitutes came to the king and stood before him. The one woman said, oh, my Lord, this woman and I live in the same house, and I gave birth to a child while she was in the house. Then on the third day after I gave birth, this woman also gave birth, and we were alone. There was no one else with us in the house. Only we two were in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. And she arose at midnight and took my son from beside me while your servant slept and laid him at her breast and laid her dead son at my breast. When I rose in the morning to nurse my child, behold, he was dead. But when I looked at him closely in the morning, behold, he was not the child I had born. But the other woman said, no, the living child is mine and the dead child is yours. The first said, no, the dead child is yours and the living child is mine. Thus they spoke before the king. Then the king said, the one says, this is my son that is alive and your son is dead. And the other says, no, but your son is dead and my son is the living one. And the king said, bring me a sword. So a sword was brought before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to the one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was alive said to the king, because her heart yearned for her son, oh, my Lord, give her the living child and by no means put him to death. But the other said, he shall be neither mine nor yours. Divide him. Then the king answered and said, give the living child to the first woman and by no means put him to death. She is his mother. And when I read this passage, it was clear that, you know, the real mother loved her son so much she was willing to give him up, basically give up everything to save him. What Solomon did to test these two prostitutes makes perfect sense. It reminds me of being willing to give up everything for the sake of the son. And that's a theme that we see the whole way through the Bible. Absolutely. You think Solomon solved thousands of cases over his reign, yet this one is recorded. And I think you're right. It's recorded for a reason. It might not be distinctly obvious, but we saw the same type of test a few weeks ago in our reading in 2 Samuel 16. Mephibosheth had a servant named Ziba. Ziba lies to King David during the time that David's son Absalom tries to take over the kingdom and David is forced to flee. Ziba tells him that Mephibosheth had turned on him and David gives Ziba all of Mephibosheth's property because of that. But when King David returns to Jerusalem to take his throne back, he meets Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth tells David the truth and that Ziba was lying. Right. 2 Samuel 19, 24 to 30 says, He has slandered your servant to my Lord the King, but my Lord the King is like an angel of God. Do therefore whatever seems good to you. For all of my father's house were but men doomed to death before my Lord the King, but you set your servant among those who eat at your table. And what further right have I than to cry to the King? And the King said to him, why speak any more of your affairs? I have decided you and Ziba shall divide the land. And Mephibosheth said to the king, oh, let him take it all since my Lord, the king has come safely home. So there you go. He's willing to give it all up. And it shows his, tr he was the one telling the truth, not Ziba. Right. And it shows his love for David. Yeah. He was willing to give up everything for the joy of having mm -hmm. David back. And he showed his love for David. Yep. And he says why. David saved him and he was thankful. Right. And it's a reoccurring theme throughout all of scripture and it's all over the New Testament. We talk about it in our book, No Half Truths Allowed, and we did a podcast episode in uh, No Trash, Just Truth. I think it's episode nine or 10 called Counting the Costs, if you want to check it out. But in Matthew 19, 21, Jesus says to the rich young ruler, if you would be perfect, go sell what you possess, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. Luke 14, 33, Jesus says, so therefore any one of you who does not renounce all that he has cannot be my disciple. Yeah. And there's even more passages. Jesus told his disciples, if anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up the cross and follow me. 
he even says in Matthew 10, you know, whoever loves your father or your mother more than me is not worthy of me. So there's definitely a counting the cost aspect that's all through here. Yeah, without a doubt. He says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and covered up. And in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has to buy the field for that pearl. And he says, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls, who finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had to buy it. And the point of all those verses and all the parables that we mentioned is that our love for Jesus shows in how we view having him above everything else that we have. At some point, we're going to have to sacrifice for the sake of our faith. Now, many of us aren't going to have to sacrifice our lives for Jesus, but some of us will. Many have, and many are today faced with that choice. Absolutely. You know, we talk about this in many of our No Trash, Just Truth episodes about counting the cost and how, especially since 2020 and all the stuff that happened seemed to be getting worse for Christians in this country. And we already know that they are in other countries. And we may be called on to give up everything, renounce everything for the sake of Christ. And we need to be prepared ourselves as Christians to do that. Yeah. Estimates in North Korea is that they currently have 30,000 Christians in concentration camps, some for the offense of owning a Bible or publicly speaking about Christ. And so many are touting Zelensky as some big hero, but what you don't hear is that he shut down any opposing media and has pretty much made Christianity a crime in Ukraine. In Canada, just pointing out to someone that their homosexuality or transgender lifestyle is a sin has now become a crime. In Canada, Nathan Pavlowski was arrested for reading the Bible in public outside of a library where drag queen story hour was happening. I mean, we keep hearing these, these episodes over and over of these things happening. I think it's coming to America and lots of other places. Alistair Begg has said that one way we can ready ourselves to be able to sacrifice and be ready for persecution is to think about our resolve and how we're going to respond to it. And that makes perfect sense. If we resolve ourselves to the fact that we're willing to sacrifice anything, anything we have to, our life, our family, our home, anything for the sake of the sun, that will definitely help us stay strong if and when we're faced with persecution. I think we need to be prepared. I think you're right. I think Alistair Begg is right. I think going in thinking, oh, I'll just do it and not really thinking it deeply through will leave you unprepared at that point. Yeah, I agree. And as the apostle Paul says in Philippians 3, 8, I count all things to be lost in view of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered loss of all things and count them but rubbish so that I may gain Christ. That's how we need to think about it. That's right. So this week, meditate on Paul's words. Think about what you'd be willing to sacrifice for the sake of Jesus and make it a regular habit to pray that the Holy Spirit will give you the strength that you need should the time ever come that you need it. Amen to that. And that's probably a good place to end today. Have a blessed morning, everyone. Music